in oncology, which are basically half of all trials are oncology, you sometimes have patients with late stage or treatment resistant cancer that would participate in the phase one studies instead of healthy volunteers. Why? Because ethically, these patients are at their last resort. And this is usually late stage. When you're talking about things like late stage or treatment resistance, you've already tried other therapies. So this whole idea of right to try that the industry has been pushing, and rightfully so, and the administration, the new administration is going to continue rolling with this. It's These are the ones that do phase one. So with the exception of oncology and sometimes psychiatric trials where patients are already hospitalized, phase one studies are usually done on healthy volunteers. Now, there are examples where rare disease studies use small patient populations. Maybe there's only 100 patients in the United States. So you're lucky if you can get like 10 of them. I mean, that'd be like 10% of everyone with this condition enrolled in your study. So in those cases, because they are smaller patient populations, they might combine a phase one with a phase two into a single protocol. And that's why you'll see phase one slash two. Those are for rare disease or harder to find patients. For everything else in phase one, they're using healthy volunteers. And the healthy volunteers really get no benefit out of joining that study other than compensation and contributing, so altruism, contributing back to the field, contributing back to science. There's two kind of designs. There's more than this, but just to keep it simple, single ascending dose and multiple ascending dose. So single ascending dose, otherwise known as SAD, is gradually increasing the dose among the groups, whereas multiple ascending dose is repeated the dosing to assess cumulative effects. And so those are the two trial designs for phase one studies. These usually last several weeks 